Uh, good morning. I have a question from a viewer that I've been meaning to make a video on anyway. Uh, in fact, I think this is of huge importance, this video. And it's uh, in order to do the video right, I need to have a hide ready to go and some bark liquor. And, you know, I need to set some stuff up. So it's a little bit of a production. Uh, but this problem is so common and so important. And I've been asked, you know, this stuff before, and I've typed it out repeatedly in comments or people that write me asking me tanning questions that I thought I would just whip out a quick explanation that is uh, probably totally adequate. It just won't have the, quite the same impact as if I have uh, physical specimens on hand and actually demonstrate what happens. Okay, this is uh, Jack Herbick. Hey Steve, I have a question pertaining to the hide I am tanning. I did the test pieces like you said and they turned out great, dot 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 dot. But I'm running into a problem where with the full hide, no matter how much I strengthen the solution, the hide will deplete it and the solution will go rancid smelling. I am boiling old bark and using the water to boil the new bark, red oak by the way, and putting the hide in full strength solutions of that with about seven batches but the hide just depletes it within days without much noticeable penetration. The solution never goes completely clear, but rather a red, brown, foggy color and tons of mold will grow on top. When I pull out the leather, it smells bad, but feels fine, not slimy or anything. I've gone through two plastic tubs of bark that I chopped, which is of questionable quality because it was from scrap wood at a lumber yard and it was probably rained on a few times, but was mostly attached to the wood. I'm just not sure what I'm doing wrong and why it keeps getting so smelly when my test pieces that I did in mason jars did not get like this. This is the most common worst mistake. I don't know how to say that right. And this, it's more like a complex of problems that are all related or kind of the same result. Uh, not using enough liquor, not strengthening the liquor enough often or often enough, not making a strong enough liquor or using weak tanning materials or some combination of those. And there's various ways to remedy this overall situation where you're ending up with a hide that's soaking in weak liquors. If it's soaking in a depleted liquor, it is not tanning anymore. If it is soaking in a weak liquor, it is becoming damaged. Now that can result in different things. You could end up with a hide that's uh, kind of brittle and the grain's damaged and it crack, the grain cracks easily or the whole hide cracks easily and is weak or it can end up uh, just empty. Like, say, this this hide is nice and mellow, it, it has weight to it, it has substance, you know, it feels solid and, and nice. But if you lose too much of the hide substance because the hide is essentially rotting, I mean, you're losing the substance of the hide and it becomes what we call empty or spongy. And that's not always a horrible thing. It, it can actually be kind of uh, nice, really super drapey leather, but it's not as strong and, and uh, not really something you want to do to try to get that effect is soaking in these weak liquors. So the answer to Jack's question is really in his description, which is that he was able to take small test pieces, put them in mason jars of this liquor, and they turned out great. But now when he has a whole hide and he's putting it in tubs of liquor, it's depleting the liquor, the hide's not tanning enough, and it's, you know, it's uh, getting funky. So the explanation to that scenario is there's just simply not enough tannin. I mean, it comes down to being that basic. Well, you'll see a lot, and a lot of the reason people make this mistake is that there's still color, like he described, as kind of a foggy, light, brownish color or something. Uh, the, the color of the liquor does not necessarily equate to tannin content. So there's stuff in there that's either not tannin or it's not available or, or whatever. And a little bit of color doesn't really mean anything. So the hide's just sitting in there. If it doesn't have the preservative effect of the tannin, and it's not, you know, tanning the skin and this, uh, you know, a bunch of bacteria will be uh, growing in there. Given the amount of bark that he's used, it sounds like a lot of bark. It should be able to tan like a, a small skin. I, I don't know what kind of skin it is. So I don't remember. We've obviously had a conversation about it before, but I talked to a lot of people about you know, different skins, so I don't know. But if it's like a deer skin, it should be tanned a long time ago with that much bark or half that much bark. Regardless, unless it's like a giant cattle skin or a buffalo skin or something like that, that bark is weak. 
Uh, it's probably been out longer than you thought. It's probably lost more tannin than you thought. If it's a red oak, it's probably not super thick bark, I'm guessing. So it would also lose that quicker. Like a tree falls in the winter or the spring or something like that, and the bark is still essentially fresh, right? It hasn't even dried out, and it gets rained on, no problem. It's like raining on a living tree. It's not going to wash anything out. But once that bark dries, out, the water can come into it and move through it and carry that tannin away. So uh, chances are that that's just bad material and you're either going to need to get different material or just use more of it. Now I realize that can be disheartening because you know it's a lot of work to get all that material but consider looking for better material. People who cut firewood, like especially if there's a place that has a yard where they cut and split and season firewood for sale, like on a commercial scale, uh, check with those guys and see if you can scrounge bark there and get some fresher, better bark. Or check with the mills, but make sure you're getting, you know, the fresher, better bark. Like my friend lives in Pennsylvania and he said he has access to bark, oak bark, uh, off a hardwood mill on a regular basis, like a truckload a week or something, like crazy amounts of bark. In most parts of the country, uh, sumac is fairly common and often abundant, and that's a really good material, just the leaf. Anyway, watch my video on tanning materials, but you just got to either use a whole lot more and or you got to use better material. Now, the process itself, as he describes it, is the indicator. Okay, that's the indicator of whether you have enough. Every time you put a hide in liquor, every batch of liquor you pour out, every batch you open up of newly boiled liquor, stick your hand in it, lift up a handful of the liquor and look at it and kind of pour it out and look at it in your hand and see like how dense it is, how colorful it is, what kind of you know qualities there are to its appearance. For one thing, you can see like your hand through the liquor, right? You can see your the palm of your hand through there and just see kind of like how dense it is and always check it. Every time you, you look at the liquor, you be looking at what it looks like and you'll, you'll quickly find that when you put hides in the liquor, it depletes the liquor very quickly. And in the beginning of tanning, this happens very fast. Like I, I'll be adding, you know, fresh liquor within the first day. Like I started in a certain batch of liquor. By the end of a day, it's going to have sucked out most of that. As the tanning progresses, that, that process is going to slow down a lot. And pretty soon you'll be able to bump the strength of that liquor up and it'll actually stay strong for a long time because the outside of the hide, the part that's easy to penetrate, is already tanned and it takes longer for the, you know, uh, liquor to creep in and tan the rest of the skin. And it sounds like he really hasn't even got past that initial, uh, you know, big suck phase where it's just <laughs> slurping up, you know, tons and tons of tannin. So a common scenario, besides using weak liquors, besides not using enough or making big enough batches, all of those can, can result in this. But let's say that I have a batch of quality bark. I have my you know quality oak bark here. It's uh, never been rained on. It's high in tan and I know it's good stuff. So I fill a big stainless pot with it and I cover it with water and I simmer it for four hours. I'm going to pour that off. I'm going to add water again and then I'm going to cook it again and I'll have these two cooks, right? Okay, so now I have two batches of liquor. The second batch is weaker because it was the second boil. I'm going to pour this into here enough to start the hide in and that's going to prevent the hide from tanning too rapidly if that's going to be a problem. It just kind of starts the process out gently and within a day I'm going to be dumping more of this in there if I didn't use it all but let's say I use all of this so that's going to bring this level is going to be let's say like that right the level of the liquor this side is going to slurp up all the tannin in this in a day or two probably so then I'm going to add some of this and I'm going to say okay let's start to break, keep that solution strength up at least we want to keep it up and really we kind of want to be starting to build it eventually so I put that in a day later I add some more and then I add some more of this concentrate this is going to continue to slurp out the tannin for a while like it's going to take it out pretty fast and you want to be uh, attending this and stirring it at least once a day messing around with it making sure you bump it up it's not a big deal if you leave it for a day or even two days but don't leave it for a week and don't not stir it because the hide is folded on itself it's not going to tan evenly unless you you mess with it so preferably you're stirring this several times a day and, and strengthening the solution as needed but 
this is going to keep slurping it out and pretty soon we have a solution that really doesn't have that much tannin in it and every time you add this concentrate say you keep adding the same amount this liquor is not getting stronger it's getting weaker because you have all this liquid now so you have this ton of liquid and you're adding a small amount of concentrate so even at this point even if you dump say we're down to here and you dump the rest of this in here or get a new batch and dump that in you're going to end up with way more liquor than you need and the hide is you know swimming around down here in all this liquor but you can't get the strength up because you've j basically just accumulated water and depleted tannin in this whole process. So this is a real common scenario. And what you need to do is stop at some point here, maybe say when half of this is gone, stop for a day or two, stir this around a lot. And when it looks really weak, it probably is. And there's probably not that much left. Now you can take that, that old weak liquor. A lot of people ask this and start a new batch and boil, use that to boil the new batch. But really, there's so little liquor left in that if it's really depleted and it really looks like, like tea that you would drink or maybe just a little stronger than that, there's probably not much left in there and you don't really need to, to bother. And if you're cooking it in your house, it's probably not going to smell very good either. Leave it for a while till this gets depleted and then dump a bunch of that out. Like dump half of this out. Whatever you need to do to get it down to a point where there's enough for the hide to be in, but only that much, you know, and not, not really any extra because you're going to start adding lick water again. And now the hide is probably tanned enough. It's, it's well penetrated. It's probably starting to slow down a little bit. Now you can take all of this and just dump it in there and get a nice strong solution. And from that point, you know, you, you can't quantify any of this. The only way you could quantify this is if you're using the same hides, prepared the same way, using the same, you know, material from the same area that you have some kind of consistency with. You see what I'm saying? There's just too many variables. So you need to use this like observation, like, like Jack's observations are excellent. You know, he's saying, okay, it doesn't smell right. It's growing mold. It's depleting rapidly and turning into this like weak, cloudy looking crap. Dump all that liquor out. You know, once it's like, you can tell that it's really not doing anything anymore. Dump all that out and start with a new batch. Make every effort to get something stronger or boil it once, you know, like bo fill your pot and, and cover it with, just cover the material with water and then dump that on a new batch of bark and cook it in the same water and start, you know, try to get some kind of a concentrate going. Because at some point you are going to slow this process down. You're going to stop adding all the time because the hide is partially tanned. The process is going to slow down and that liquor needs to be strong enough to preserve the hide. And so if it, you're constantly depleting it and then it's sitting there, that's just, it's just bad news. Okay. The hide is not preserved indefinitely. The core of the hide is not tanned yet. There's always bacteria growing in these, these ferments during this process, but it's a matter of which ones and how much. And of course, also, what do they have to eat? So the further the hide gets tanned, the more protected it is. But you know, you can't just procrastinate endlessly. And I've seen like almost every amateur bark tanner makes this mistake. I did it over and over and over again until I got it, figured this all out. Almost everyone else I see do this. People just don't understand how fast the liquor gets used up and how much material of, of what quality it takes to keep that process going and keep that strength up. So at some point you need to get this to a high strength and then you can chill a little bit. You know, you can get it down to where you're coming and checking it even once a week or less, depending on your goals and your, your work style and your time. You have to like work to get to that point where you can procrastinate to that degree. Maybe it's not even procrastination, it depends, but you can't afford to procrastinate some once you get to this certain level. Almost everyone does it if they don't know better. Occasionally someone will suffer from the opposite problem of like too, too strong a solution and phenomenon called case hardening. I find that's quite uncommon. Most people just don't understand how much material they need or they're not getting good material. Try to go out of your way to get good material. Watch my video on tanning materials and I have tips in there on where to where to look for stuff. I hope this video goes a long way toward helping a lot of hides turn out better. The quality of the leather will turn out. Like in some cases you will fail completely and you'll end up with something that's almost useless or pretty bad. In other cases it's just not going to have the quality. With this skin it just has a nice, it's mellow, but it's substantial and it has weight to it and it just feels really good. And overall, like it's a fairly, there's some discoloration that probably has more to do with the fats in the skin. 
uh, but it's a pretty clear, even color and stuff like that. Hopefully I'll do the actual official video on this someday with some actual samples and we'll actually do this wrong, you know, to, to sh demonstrate exactly what goes wrong um, consistently. That's it. You know, there's no reason for this to be as weak as it is.